Hello and welcome to Real News Network and News Click. Today we are in conversation with Dr. Suman Sahai, the chairperson of Gene Campaign, a group that works on issues such as sustainable agriculture, uh, genetic diversity, uh, and intellectual property rights and seeds. And today we are in conversation with her on the planned mega mergers of six agribusiness corporations. Uh, Dr. Sahai, welcome uh, to the program. Thank you. Um, so this current uh, merger that is afoot globally, where six mega agriculture corporations are merging, um, Dow with DuPont, uh, Monsanto with Bayer, ChemChina with Syngenta, the concern is that this will lead to a dominance in market share. Um, can you give us a sense of why is this merger happening simultaneously? and what are the likely sort of impacts? See, simultaneously it has to happen because if two of them get together, they become too big for the rest. Mm -hmm. So everybody has to sort of keep um, a pace in order to compete on size now. Why is it happening? I think it's of a piece with the kind of developments that you've seen over the last years of consolidation of all interests uh, in, in agriculture particularly, globally. So, first we had this phase of the industrialization of the food chain. Mm -hmm. Then you had the integration of food with inputs into agriculture. So, you saw all these life science corporations, which were actually chemicals. These are all people who moved from chemicals, not moved from, but added on to their chemical base, the seed component, so that in the agriculture sector, you're covering all bases. So, this is a sort of a consolidation. Mm -hmm of the agriculture sector. The intention is of course global dominance of this field, mm -hmm. of the field of agriculture, of the field of food production and of the field of value chains in agriculture. At the bottom of this somewhere is the understanding that as we enter into climate change and uh, the era of climate change and as we move towards a, a global population that is certainly rising we are looking at food as a very strategic resource. And it's not looked as a strategic resource only today. You know, go back to the famous words of Henry Kissinger, who said words to the effect that if you control a nation's food, you control the nation. So and the understanding that food has been a very important resource has been around, but it hasn't become mainstream like now. There is this understanding that whoever has the food has a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that this is unconnected or disconnected with the fact that the big food giants are now coming together and becoming bigger. So one of the concerns is that uh, if this planned merger of these six companies into three go through, they'll control some 70% of the agrochemicals market and some 60% of the commercial seeds market. And there's already been a lot of opposition from farmers, from unions, from researchers uh, to, to sort of reject this merger. Can you give us a sense of what would be the impacts on farmers, on consumers, and on the environment if these See, the, this is a very basic together. thing. The greater the choice on the market, the better off the consumer is. In this case, the consumer is the farmer, essentially uh, the farmer, and later on then the consumer of the food. So the moment you start to restrict the supply and restrict the choices, the person or the category of people who are going to suffer the most are the consumers of those products, which are the farmers in this case. The, the large giants are getting larger and they will be able to control the product, which means they can control the flow and availability of the product and this amounts to blackmail. You can use this, it's a very effective tool. They will certainly control the price as you've seen in the pharmaceutical sector. Yes. The fewer the number of agencies that are producing a drug, mm -hmm. the higher the patent protection, the higher the prices. I mean, we've, everybody who's been working on the intellectual property rights uh, area has seen that it's a, it's a very direct linear correlation. You'll anticipate the same thing in the, in the seed sector. Having said this, I'd like to point out that there are many choices. And if something is happening at the global uh, level, say Monsanto and Bayer, or uh, ChemChina and Syngenta, it need not necessarily affect us. Let us remember at the end of the day, this we must always remember, national legislation will always trump international developments. In most cases of this kind, uh, quasi-commercial, economic, 
related to, to uh, vulnerable sectors, you do have a choice. If your national uh, capacity is strong, then you can counter this. I mean, say for example, example, any one of these giants or all three of these giants when they happen will control your pesticides and seed. Will you manufacture your own pesticides and seeds? A country the size of India mm -hmm. need not really have worries on that score. I wish to underline this to try and counter the kind of it has not begun to be hysterical yet, but there is a strong hysteria developing on good heavens, you know, there is this all of this merger taking place. Yeah, so, what if Dow and DuPont mm -hmm. are merging? You do not have to buy their products. So, linked to that for instance, there are regulatory challenges happening in the European Competition Commission, in the US courts, in Brazil. Um, in India, the Competition Commission is examining the deal. So, do you see a legal sort of challenge possible? Bob? See, yes, of course. I mean, if you want to have Dow and DuPont here, you will have to have regulatory oversight, regulatory mechanisms. But what I am saying is that if these are not things that you are able to control, mm -hmm. then you do not have to have a partnership with these agencies. The point that I am making is that India is large enough, has a huge domestic market. It has scientific and research capacity and in the area of seed, God knows we have very diffuse and very capable competence in the form of farmers who produce seed. But the way that uh, the farmers ability to counter these big transnationals are being diluted is through trade agreements that India is signing. For instance, you have, uh, I mean the TPP tried to bring in sort of uh, the UPOV into those 12 countries that were part of it. TPP was very bad news. But now you have Trump exiting from the TPP and you have the regional comprehensive economic partnership in which Japan and South China Korea are lead. trying to push. Yeah. I mean, so you of course need to challenge the corporations, but you also need to challenge the trade agreements. I want to get your sense of the international movement for progressive sort of agriculture framework. See, we, Where we, is have that a, uh, we have a very good track record as far as to, to, to learn from as far as our experience with the WTO is concerned. You know, uh, we went from a stage of near paralysis because our government agencies were completely incapable of comprehending and therefore responding to what the Uruguay round had demanded. Mm -hmm. First of all, the patenting of seeds that it had demanded. But from there, we have come a long way and we have learnt a lot. Even agencies in government have learnt a lot. And those lessons will come in very handy now. And I think more than that, the level of confidence that we have, uh, that you can take these guys on. So, what is the big deal? India has after all given itself a farmers rights legislation and uh, Gene Campaign has been a very big part of that process, which is the only legislation in the world that gives rights to farmers. Mm -hmm. So, we have done that. Now, then comes the question of political will. If you have a government that simply refuses to listen to any sense and does not consult with anybody and goes its own happy way and gets into a ditch. That is a terrible thing to happen, it is a sad thing to happen and again something like that is very difficult to take a stand. Mm -hmm. But I think as a process, yes, if you want to deal with Dow DuPont, you have to get into the competition commission's recommendations, you will have to have regulatory oversight. If you can swing a deal that is advantageous for you. After all, all of these mergers are also facing great big caveats. That is why they are not happening overnight. That is right. Uh, Chem China they and They have Sinjang. to exit certain businesses. Uh, yeah, they have different. all sorts of conditionalities. So, you can also pose conditionalities and say that we will allow so and so to function here with these con under these conditions. And if we can control uh, the Indian state of affairs through enlightened, assertive, national action and national policy, mm -hmm. then I do not think that we need to be in a flap. Okay. It is when we are weak domestically and given to pressures and given to um, even inveiglements and blandishments and I am afraid we are very vulnerable to blandishments in all forms and you know exactly what I am talking about then what can any regulatory oversight do? Also linked to the fact that agriculture is a state subject and since your since Gene Campaign works across the country engaging with state governments, do you see uh, sort of possible progressive laws that state governments can put in place 
being challenged or is that a good way to go because agriculture is a state subject as well you know agri- this this agriculture is a state subject thing works only up to a point and it works more domestically at all international levels and international de- de- decisions we've gone through this process during the wto also the executive has the right to take a decision yeah um its implementation may run into conflict with the states some states may come around and say okay fine you've done a deal your business we're not letting it happen here in x y state but that's a that's a, a tough one you know and i think the the best course of action for us is for the for the central government for the executive to realize and i think it's our job to to try and educate them it will depend on how receptive they are or not whether they open up channels for discourse and dialogue or not but i think civil society must play its role in bringing together uh, i would say the the informed citizen with educational materials you know a lot of people uh, would like to know a little bit more but they don't know where to get that information so very succinct information you know hand built type things that that uh, spell out the dangers the consolidation of seed means somebody else will control the seed its its availability and its price and the implications for your average delhi middle class consumer is more expensive food i don't think a lot of people give a hoot about what happens to the farmer but they will give a hoot about what happens to their own food prices their fa- the monthly budget etc so that's how we have to tailor it i mean all of us who have been involved in campaigns for these last several years should put our heads together and uh, mount a, a challenge really for the government thank you very much for sharing your insights with us we uh, will come back to you because these mergers are still sort of work in progress and we hope to get you back to the studio for other issues as well thank Be you very much thank you thank you